Hey everyone, welcome back to Unsealed and Revealed, the web series from Sideshow, in which me and my favorite people uh, unbox the latest and greatest stuff from the six scale universe. I'm Terry Smith, your host for the show, and with me as always are uh, my buddy and guy Clender out there at the Sideshow studio. How's it going there, guy? It's going great. I love the new glasses, Terry. You're looking great. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. It has to yeah, There's a there's a in game for all glasses. <laughs> eventually, eventually they have to make their way out the door, and new ones have to take their place. Uh, so, yeah, I can't, there's there's no comfortable way to segue into my next introduction from that. So I'm just gonna say, hey, Paul, how are things <laughs> how are things out there your way? Speaking of segues, um, <laughs> hey everyone, it's really really good to see all of you again. Um, I hope you're all coming down from the madness that was spectacular. We are here. We are ready for Unsealed and Revealed. Again, we're taking a look at the 2012 Captain America. Side.show forward slash Unsealed Cap 2012. We are live on Facebook, the Let Your Geeks Out Show group, YouTube, and Twitch. If you guys have any questions for Guy or Terry, let me know in the comments. I'll be hanging out with you guys, you know, just being an absolute rascal. So, ready to go. I thought being a rascal was my job. That's fine. We can both be rascals. <laughs> I understood we each that have reference. our own unique way of being a rascal. Yeah, yeah, good. That is a good reference. Thanks very much for that guy. Uh, so I guess without further ado, and by the way, is anyone ever really truly over spectacular? Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Never. That a boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now that now that uh, now that Paul and I each have our cups of coffee uh, in front of us and are ready to go, guy, I think it's time for you to uh, delve into that. That epic figure, man. I All right, let's for this. let's take a look. Uh, now, this is the 2012 version, or the suit in which we saw in Avengers. Uh, right here on the box, great photo of a very stern-looking uh, Chris Evans, Captain America, right there uh, inside that Avengers A uh, with the space background. Now, this does that die cut on the side that we've seen. Uh, throughout the series of figures uh, where you get the gold foil of the character as well as the Avengers A down below, Captain's Shield right there. I like when a toy has a warning. Legalese. Warning. Yeah. This is really cool. Um, <laughs> too cool for some. Makes me feel like really, it makes me feel really freaking daring. Like, <laughs> it's uh, daring. Like, just, daring. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to play with this. Gosh, darn it. I've got uh, a really risky hobby. Yeah, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, like to, I like to go hang gliding. I like to go mountain biking. <laughs> I, I have like six skills. skills. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we're going to slide that top sleeve off uh, to reveal your traditional window box here. And of course, uh, seeing the figure, the additional head sculpt, Loki shield, all that uh, spin right around. We also get that disintegrating Avengers A there. Um, I am going to open the box from below and pull out said figure. Now, something I've already removed from the box, Terry's personal favorite, the instructions. Ah. Uh, now, the reason, now on a figure like this, you're going to say, well, there's not a lot of instructions I need to worry about. Um, if this is your first or your fifth Captain America, um, the shield is always something you want to be careful with and how to uh, work it, and we will go over that. I'm using one additional tool today um, that you don't have uh, in your kits that come with the figures and that is uh some uh, little needle nose oh hey i've got tweezers that. i know that that's something you have i know it's something that you and i have talked about before uh that's a good thing to have and uh we'll mm -hmm. see why you want those on this all right so moving instructions off to the side not your favorite um, accessory, probably. I usually just throw them over my shoulder. Exactly. Probably one of everybody's favorite accessory is going to be that shield. And it's, and it is gorgeous. Um, uh, yeah, no, dude. No, you're not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Um, and coming up with this exclusive guy on this figure is going to be Loki's scepter. Now I'm going to turn on a little underlight so you can see how light goes through that. That is wow. a clear translucent blue. That is a great accessory. And I think that it's, uh, I, I think that I really would love to have one of those in life size. Yeah, so Hot yeah. Toys, while you're making Infinity Gauntlets, you know. There you can go. We just, can we maybe get something that fits the bill with that? Now you can see in that <laughs> close that up. That wall behind me. In the close up there that that stone actually also has a bit of a texture to it as it did in uh, the yeah, film. Yeah. That isn't just a solid uh, blue uh, kind of bead or anything like that. Also, uh, thank you very much, Michael. Great close-up. God, I'm loving these close-ups. Um, 
is you do see that great paintwork done in that bronze that is going to be kind of the short handle of the scepter. Uh, some great patina on there as well uh, on the blade part. On this. So this is a great, uh, very neat one. And of course, there's something special to go with that one. Next up on the tray. Boom. Okay, we're getting an all new head sculpt. Yeah, that looks really good. Boom. Boom. In there. Uh, you know, yeah. he had a, this was, uh, you know, we've talked about like Tony having the sleeker suits later on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the higher the numbers got, you know, 50 and 85 got to be very, very sleek. Where you look at Captain uh, and that his suit actually got a little bulkier. Um, you know, it, it moved away up, from this, yeah. this tight suit yeah. uh, that he had in this one here, particularly where you have his helmet and then that kind of hood that he has underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've done a great job of where you get the texture of the kind of undersuit hood that I talked about and then the kind of slick version of the helmet. And it does have, of course, the wings and the A there. And again, a bit of a stern look to him there. This is a really great um, helmeted portrait. While you're talking about that, the uh, the evolution of his costume, if you don't mind, I'd just like to note that uh, we uh, we know that Phil Coulson, uh, Agent Coulson, had a lot of um, of say, or at least had some input, as according to him, on the first Captain America costume, which is, again, looking at this, is really slick. You can see that there are some tactical elements to it, but it is more of a nod to the classic um, streamlined these stripes and everything right there. It just looks like something that you might actually see in the uh, comic book. Whereas over time, after Steve Rogers got to wear the suit and had a little bit more say in it, that's when it evolved into the bulkier, more armored tactical getup that we're uh, that we're used to by the time in-game arrives. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. again, Michael, thank you so much for these close-ups. Hey, um, I'm I'm loving on this. Uh, we're, you know, the the show keeps evolving. Um, but there we go, yeah. that is our unmasked portrait there. Um, done a great job with the hair in particular. Anytime you get that strand uh, look in hair uh, on a six scale figure, to get something that has that amount of detail um, has never been easy. And Hot Toys seems to over and over really excel at that um, in all of their figures. And to get uh, hair that's kind of blonde is usually pretty difficult, it tends to usually have kind of a yellowish uh, feel to it, but this does have that translucent kind of blonde look. Uh, this is a very I think, natural one. I think one. the first figure that I saw that with might have been um, episode four Luke, Farm Boy Luke. Um, yeah. Or I'm not sure of the, of the release schedule, but it may have also been the first Anakin Skywalker, but it was one of those two. And I, uh, the first time I got eyes on it, I was like, wow. And um, when you see it in hand, it becomes really obvious that it's a, it's a solid choice. It was a really great decision. Yeah, Terry, that was, you're right. I mean, I, I wanna agree with you that I think that was, that was when it is. That was such a big change to suddenly see blonde hair uh, being much, you know, I think probably for, there were two things that were very, very difficult for sculptors and painters to pull off. Blonde hair, and the other was any facial hair, uh, particularly yeah. scruff like an Indiana Jones or, or something like that was always uh, very, I totally very difficult. I sympathize. It's hard for me to pull off facial hair as well. <laughs> Good facial hair. Uh, we work our way down on the suit, um, and this does have kind of that crossover. Again, uh, you, know, you kind of wonder how exactly he fits into the suit there, uh, you know, where it's got the kind of the clasp here, uh, and such. I do like the break up of the texture. You're going to get that very bright uh, red and white uh, there on the chest. Um, you got the hints of the metal up here on the shoulder. Mm. Little hint to that. Like like eagle wings. Exactly. Those, little white those on shoulder, the... Those shoulder things are like freedom. They look like freedom. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a neat idea. I dig that. Yeah. That's. I wonder if that's part of it. Now you do see freedom on the back... Wing. There is the uh, the look of a zipper there. Uh, this is yeah. not a removable suit, okay? This is not one that you are going to want to remove from your figure. Now, we do see on the I, back uh, of the belt, however, there is a Velcro tab, and that lets you know that this belt will be able to move around uh, while you're posing uh, the figure. So it's not going to hinder uh, when you're uh, doing any of your poses. The next close-up I want to uh, jump into is down on the wrist and the gloves. You see that this has that padded leather look to mm -hmm. it. Um, this is a sculpted and painted 
uh, done that way. Does that work a little better? Um, Can I just add that the, the gloves and the boots on this costume are my favorite Captain America glove boot combo. Yeah, blue, blue, blue glove boot combo. Legitimately, they look. Yeah, it looks something about the way that they're designed, the way that they're structured. I'm not sure how well they play in real life, but <laughs> damn, they look cool. They they are incredibly cool looking. I mm. really like how it's done. Uh, you see, on both of those, you get those little bits of the metal clip on there. I'm gonna shoot a little light there to uh, do a little. And then on the inside palm, little hints of blue. Now this is in kind of the relaxed hands that he comes with out of the box, um, but that blue is going to be on all of them. You have a, uh, a throwing, a shield throwing hand, two uh, shield holding hands, both a right and a left, and then also a pointing hand on there. Um, Working on down to the lower end of the suit, we kind of have those zippers down on the side of the pant. Uh, the knee pad kind of attached inside the suit. Again, look at how that stitching, that cut and sew yeah. uh, on that. And then, uh, as you said, your favorite boot combo. Um, again, just not a solid red on this. You're getting those different clips and all mm -hmm. on here. I do um, love some. I do love some variations in tone. And the variations in, in tone on that, and again done in that great leather look on that. Some really serious uh, design on this. Um, now this is a little different than uh, if you had the earlier version Ooh. of this because this is now a cut boot, and we'll that go over is, that in our. You, I would uh, not have known. I in our articulation known, you know, segment so coming up soon. Um, but uh, yeah, great, great look on the boot there um where this is this is a red but it's such a deep red that it's almost in that kind of um burgundy brownish uh uh look there and just those hints of color so i'm going to move the figure to the side we're going to talk about the last of the accessories i did talk about those hands you do have what they call the shield throwing hand all right Shoot, I like that. I, I don't know if that was sam adding the sound effect or if that was um one of the one of my other co-hosts here. That sound but, effects. Uh, the, the quality of that sound effect was way too good for it to have been me. <laughs> All clearly, right. clearly, that was Super Producer Sam. All yeah, Super way. Producer Sam will be adding sound effects from now on with the show. Um, wait till you hear his Loki scepter sound. It's absolutely spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's there. You may have heard a hint of it. It's good. It's good. Wait till we use actually, it. That was actually that was actually me. That was oh, oh, okay. Like, yeah. Knock it off, I YouTube. Can't, I can't. I can't. I can't poison <laughs> his reputation by letting you falsely attribute one of my poor sound effects to Sam. That's no, no. That's All okay. right. Both right and left are going to be the shield hold hands. Okay. This also holds the scepter, and they are a As softer. As opposed to the shield wall of Arrakis. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They Thank are you. a softer material, so um, you can get that around, and we will attach the shield. Um, I always like a good pointing. I don't know why. I, I always like the pointing. Uh, it's because you're emotionally 12. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let that, we'll let that pass. Uh, the lecture. That's, uh, that's the Catholic school lecturing I used to receive. I, guess, um, <laughs> I didn't know you had to deal with that. Oh, okay. oh, oh there were, it's me. Do you think I didn't get lectured I mean, I'm not to? Surprised you, I'm not surprised you've been lectured. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we do have a fist uh, for the left hand. We have our display base. Captain America, Avengers Endgame, uh, and this is a traditional underhold. And then the last and largest accessory is going to be the case. Okay. Yeah, baby. Um, this is really incredibly done. Number one, you're going to have the foam right there, and I'm going to jump ahead in the game here and place the scepter inside so you can see. Holds in there great, and you do have a little bend there so it's easy to remove. Um, is a good solid firm foam on there on both the top and bottom. This is done in that kind of flight case. Uh, I'm going to turn the light off here so you can see the texture a little bit better. Um, that you get, uh, you, we, you're, you know that texture, you've seen that, um, and to see it in this scale is pretty darn incredible. Um, this actually reminds me, Guy, that my first job, first task that I had, had to perform as a full-time employee with Sideshow was cutting foam very much like that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I made uh, flight cases like this. That was a temp job. I drove to Orange County, California uh, to, nice. uh, to, to make nice. flight cases okay. for traveling rock bands um, when I first moved out here. Very, very, yeah. um, 
Down on Yours the bottom, you are going to have that kind of textured grid that we're used to seeing on, again, on these type cases. On the side, functioning handle there, and you also have a functioning handle on this side here. Ooh, now I want, uh, thank you again, Michael, for the close-ups. I'm really loving on these. Um, you see that it does have those clips that look like they're actually locked on there. If you did hear that snap, it holds nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna hold it upside down. I'm even gonna do the shake test. That's not the, oh, that's not the, the camera shake shaking, that's me. Colors, baby. Um, yeah. And there are the two hinges you see on the back. So it's an gr uh, incredibly beautifully scaled uh, version there. Uh, and now let's jump to Captain's Shield. Okay, have to go with this. Now here's a quick, here's a, here's a quick question for mm -hmm. you before you get into it. I, I, I wanna know, can you put the shield on his back in any way? Um, no, you, you can't no. on this one, and I don't remember if we saw him, uh, particularly in Endgame, we didn't see, right. see that. You're right, we never did. Um, yeah. uh, but no, it does that not was, have... That was, that, that was something that didn't happen until the Captain America uh, movies, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think we got okay. it later on um, where he did that. And so no, it does not have that. So um, in those, uh, some of the earlier ones we uh, and it, that Terry's brought up had like a magnet or it had um, a little clip that you did. This does not have that. Um, but I do want to spin this over and show the great detail work that they've done there. Um, now, of course, you have the clip that, or the um, loop that he holds in hand and the other that goes over the forearm. Um, now, because Michael's got such a great close-up here, this is where I want to get into. And that is right here on both of these. There we go. Uh, there we go. There's the angle. All right, right there's the little clip that I'm talking about. And you're going to oh, see the I instructions see yeah. that it's going to talk about um, taking those off, putting the hand on the figure, um, on the shield, then clipping it back on. Uh, I am going to do that, of course. But um, this is when you're going to want to have something uh, like these, the little tweezers that I'm using that kind of have a little bent there. They make it nice and easy for me to remove those. Uh, if you do have long nails, uh, I do not. Um, you can get those, but uh, something like this is gonna make it a lot easier uh, when you do those. It will say, as I said in the instructions, you're gonna wanna remove it, put the hand on, and then uh, insert the thing. So, and, and we will be okay. doing that, but beautifully done. Damn right. um, great job on this, that it does have that kind of spun metal look to uh, yeah, particularly the silver. Yeah, that's very well done. Um, yeah. That you, you uh, get that texture, look in there, Mm -hmm. Nice and bright. So, all right, that takes us through the accessories. Now let's articulate the man. All right, ready to ready to jump into articulation here, sir? I think we might be. I, oh. I just wonder, um, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's good in articulation because <laughs> I really want to know what this thing's capable of. Okay, so. Before I tell you, you know. Before you're going to tell me what to do with uh, said figure. Yeah. All right, so as you notice when I move this here around for the head, uh, we do not have a cut joint up at the, uh, kind of under the chin there, uh, giving us that great th uh, look, uh, very s seamless on there, roller ball joint, but you also have it, of course, into neck here, allowing us to mm -hmm. go front and back, obviously a little bit more forward. Um, now we go down onto our shoulders. Now it is a butterfly joint that we've seen, so we're gonna be able to move our forward. I feel like I'm taking him through a workout. Um. <laughs> Somebody needs to take me through a workout, guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, My body is aching for exercise. All right. Now, um, this is, even though it was a, a sleeker suit on, on, uh, on cap, uh, it is still a fabric suit that we're going to be working with and around. So this is about as high as I'm getting without, uh, with it just holding on its own. Okay. Okay. As far as our forward, we can go pretty much straight out okay. as well. Our back, good chunk as well. Again, I think if you were to continue to keep working it, 
Right now, this is of course a fresh out of the box, um, so the joints are going to be nice and snug, and the fabric is going to be nice and snug on there. Uh, we do have our bicep twist, important there, as one would expect. That's really yeah. That's this is really where uh, <laughs> this is really what I needed to know what yep. you're doing right now. Is our double okay? Little more than ninety on there. Okay, again, you're going to have uh, the uh, wrist gauntlet. Is gonna, mm -hmm. or uh, the forearm gauntlet, holding a little yeah. there. All right, now it's time for the for the Terry points of articulation, and that is twist. the trunk twists. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're gonna turn to the side. Okay, Get I've got to nice... say, I've, I've got to say that I've noticed since we started doing the hashtag Terry trunk twist thing. Um, and it's not actually a real hashtag, people, so no need to actually do it. But um, since we started talking about it a lot, I have noticed a lot more torso twisting happening <laughs> on uh, various uh, various poser pages and whatnot. Uh, so that's that's really that's really awesome to the see. It really makes a huge difference. <laughs> you know, I'm just fiddling around with like moving the uh, the 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 uh, twist the trunk twist and such, mm -hmm. and that's really where you get that shield throw. Uh, right away, you know, whether the throw or catch, you really get that kind of continued yeah. uh, motion mm -hmm. uh, in there. Next up there is go. going to be the front and back. Ooh, all right. So we do get gonna hold here. We do get a good. Yeah, we got to get some ab crunch. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Did his crunches. Okay. Again, as I said, the belt is free moving, so we don't have to yeah, worry. So watch that about that. That actually works in our favor. I can just add that uh, when you're doing a torso twist, uh, always pay attention to that belt because I'm like, say so you're like, going to really twist his torso really far to the right. Then you won't, you'll want to take that belt and actually adjust it a little bit just to like make it look like there's just a bit of a more of a gradual uh, shift to, uh, to that midsection. So that, uh, that works in your favor if you pay attention to that. I love it. All, all, all okay, featured on how to be a poser. Uh, make sure you're watching those. Um, because Terry's just giving me fast, quick ones. Uh, a more in-depth learning is done uh, when Terry does these How to Be a Poser videos. So make sure you're watching those after this. Um, our side to side. Nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, um, hey, no, prior to me ever getting to come up now. here and play with these toys, um, I was an avid uh, watcher of How to Be a Poser. Um, I, I th <laughs> and then you met me and were like, I cannot deal with that guy. Yeah, I mean, I was I was one who uh, was v pretty much a museum poser, and I still am with a, with a number of figures, particularly you know, kind of my stormtroopers oh, and this and the other had that, but um, kind of pushing a figure to its limits or really adding life to it um, came by watching how to be a poser. Um, uh, thanks, man. And and so that was always a, a great thing for me. So back to posing, we're going to go down into the hip joints of this figure here. Um, yes. I'm going to go first with my straight forward. Okay. And mm -hmm. get kind of kind of straight out there. Okay. Not quite 90, but we're not. You know, in in this particular film, he only fights himself, and he's not kicking himself in the face, so he doesn't need to go higher. Which, which of us doesn't fight ourselves? Yeah, fight ourselves on a daily basis. Um, as far as our Back. I'm going to want to get this leg straight so we can see how far back you're getting there. Okay. That's it. Okay. Also, we're getting a double joint on our knee. Can't quite kick his own butt. Not quite or kick his own I've butt. Yeah. Um, except for, you know, yeah. like literally. Ex except that other scene. Yeah. Um, now, this, this allows us to show two things. First, a new point of articulation in this type of figure and a new design uh, on it. Um, but first, before we go into that joint, we have one more design element to take a look at. It's time for Tread Bam. Watch. Man, nailed Pow. it. Okay. Right there, uh, straight That's up kick to face uh, in there. Uh, you see, it does have that uh, kind of, it's not a track shoe or anything like that. It's not an off-road shoe, but it did have kind of that uh, it, it's, it's his very own unique tread to, to Cap's boot um, that we saw. But that brings us to right here, and that is this new articulation point, or style of articulation point. We are going to get that roller ball here. A lot of times when we see that in the boot, um, the cuff uh, of the boot, or the top section, normally kind of slides downward and over that. Well, you'll notice here, 
it's kind of um, separated. And what I'm going to mm. do is actually remove one of the boots so we can see it's actually rounded. Different than what we've seen before, where normally this piece would kind of go over it. This is rounded, leaving him with a very nice red tennis shoe. Um, we probably need to get those red shoes. Um, I always say that it's you need to get red shoes. Yes, you know. I mean, I don't have any myself, but everybody. As else you can needs see, red shoes. red shoes are important. The producing team here. Oh, hey! Often wearing <laughs> uh, red shoes. Spectacular. Um, yeah. yeah, you could you could Ooh. write books or diaries all about red shoes. Yeah. Uh, just fill it full of stuff here. So, okay. That puts us to that new articulation point. And it's something that, Terry, I think it's going to be fun for us to tread watch. I, I, tread watch. <laughs> um, that I just is want a, everybody to notice that, that I haven't stopped grinning since producer Alan showed us his you can, shoe. <laughs> you can see that that, that particular tread, um, they've even gone so far as to add the wear uh, from a Sideshow Con, uh, a New York That's realism, Con. realism, my friend. Uh, the wear yeah, and tear that it gets realism. from a, a spooktacular. Um, so, you know, that's not a fresh, out-of-the-box kind of shoe. Um, and that's just the attention to detail done right here, um, which I think is spectacular. A comment from so. Paul Hernandez, more like Red Watch. <laughs> 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 so. I'm disappointed in you, Paul. <laughs> Just another day in the office for old Polly Brown Eyes here. <laughs> Polly Brown Eyes? Clearly, I need more coffee. I did, I did yeah, not, we're all exhausted. I, I Hashtag had, Polly Brown Eyes. I had no idea. Yeah, I do the figure. See, I, yeah. Pull me I, off the screen. Yeah, I'm waiting for a Polly Brown Eyes figure now. Um, right. uh, when we talk about articulation, um, the same articulation that we had with the uh, unmasked portrait is what we're going to get with the masked portrait. Okay, where you're going to, of course, have that uh, traditional roller ball down, uh, but it's deeper into the neck and then allowing the front and back movements of said figure. Um, so I think that puts us through articulation. Um, so, Terry, what would you like me to, should we? Oh, that's me. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. Would, that would be you. That would be you. I, I'm, you're right now looking online to buy red shoes. Uh, I know. I'm I, totally I know looking at red shoes. Man, you know, you know me so well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I had a red pair of Converse when I was a kid. They were my favorite. Um, I had the Alien Stompers from Reebok back in high school. The OG. What? Yeah. I did. Oh, goodness sakes. I totally sakes. did. I, was the only, I got so much crap for wearing those in, my, really? in that, in that uh, in Silly. small town school that I grew up in. Yeah, they didn't um, get it. They didn't thank goodness you left that town. Um, yeah. Before we get into posing, or as part of the posing, um, I'd like to show kind of the attaching of the shield. Um, would you like him to have his shield in his right hand or left hand? Because we do have the option I, of uh, either. I think it's going to be left hand guy. Okay. Um, All right. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think it's going to be left hand. All right. Going to take out the okay. left fist here. Um, and while you're, while you are, are you going to, are you going to do commentary while you're putting that on? Um, well, I'm just going to quickly let's, show let's do it. That. Yeah. I, what I did is I used the uh, little tweezers to get that little clip. Okay. Just two ah, little. Gotcha. Okay. Again, if you have long enough fingernails to do it. Congratulations, and you'll be able to do it. Um, I'm going to undo that. Um, as I said, the um, the material of the hand is going to be soft enough to allow me to uh, place that right on, and then I will clip it back in. This is what you're going to see right. in the instructions that it does have it. That you attach uh -huh. the hand and then push it on. So go ahead. You were going to you were going to add something while I do this. I'm going to be quiet for a moment. Okay, let's go. Cool. I was just going to point out that we are, uh, it's been a while since we've done a guess the reveal contest, and it's going to be a little bit longer uh, before we do one again. But uh, instead of doing a guess the reveal, re reveal, we thought it might be fun to do a completely different kind of guessing game. Uh, we have an all new prize for you as well, so look forward to hear from that. But first, the contest. Instead of guessing which six scale figure Guy and I are going to be talking about on the show next week, uh, we decided it might be fun for you to try to guess which figure. I currently have on my on the way to my house now to narrow it down it is a figure that's available on the sideshow website right now so if you have access to that and wanted to do a quick search that might help you narrow it down 
But uh, there is, in fact, a figure in, in the mail. <laughs> it's on its way here. Guess which one it is. The winner, the first person to guess which figure is on its way to my house, will be receiving, I think we got a graphic of it right here, a, the, uh, the Die Hard Christmas book. And look at this. This just looks like so much fun, so much validation for ever, all of you out there who have maintained throughout the decades that Die Hard is the ultimate Christmas movie. I think this is going to be the one that gives you that validation. And, and why wouldn't it be considered a Christmas movie, right? I mean, anybody else have anything to contribute on that? Paul, what's your take on it? Die Hard as a Christmas movie. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. It's okay. a Christmas movie. Um, if there are presents in any movie, I just assume it's a Christmas movie. It doesn't matter what it is. Bridget Jones' Diary, someone gets a gift, it's a Christmas movie. So um, I did narrow it down for everyone, Terry. I did say it's a six scale. Oh, did I not say that it was yeah. six scale? Oh, I don't my know. mistake. I, I thought don't it was know. just kind of like a given, but I guess I have plenty of statues, so who wouldn't? Who would, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I should point out that my favorite Christmas movie, if you, you if you apply the same parameters as Die Hard, it being attributed as okay. a Christmas movie, uh, is Iron Man 3. Ooh, yes. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Iron Man 3 is considered a Christmas movie. Lethal Weapon is considered a, a Christmas one. movie. Oh, Christmas um, movie. Weapon. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to be basic, but I do love Elf. Why like, I do. I know. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Happy to do the show with you. I'm going to scream. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to cry right after the show. That's funny. <laughs> when we talk about um, I'll, I'll so virtual hug, Elf, virtual hug. Come here. <laughs> Elf is always a, a, a popular one for me, but I, I consider personally, um, was it um, N Nightmare Before Christmas? Yes. Th that that's is a, a Christmas one. movie, not a Halloween movie for me. So that's one that I watch. It kind of waxes back and forth with some people. I should point out to you that I don't know if you saw it or not, but on my Facebook page, I just revealed to the world that I have not seen Elf ever. And I'm oh. very, very sad about it because I know that it's a John Favreau film, and I do love John Favreau for all that he's done for my life personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel he's like done I quite a bit. Yeah. So I feel like I need to just step out there, and uh, I'll be watching Elf sometime in the very near future. Probably before Thanksgiving. Mm. Probably hey, before the if we're talking game. about, if we're talking about Elf... Syrup yes. on spaghetti slaps. That's like nope, such that's, a good that's enough of combo. Okay, I don't know. Well, what that's our show today. Mean, but, um... <laughs> it's true. You should see Sam's sleeves constantly. You never yeah. know what you're gonna find. <laughs> it's it's yeah. That's you know things we didn't need to know about producer Sam today that he puts <laughs> maple syrup on spaghetti. No. <laughs> but I was curious really if anyone thing. else out there eats that. Now I really want to. Now I really want to watch the movie. If that's if that's in the movie, then that's. I mean, oh, it's I've in done the film. The fish, it's in the film. I've done the whole Doctor Who fish fingers and custard thing, and I loved it. So, um, yeah. I, I will say I have also done the syrup thing. I did not. Yeah. What was the term Sam just used? What did he just? It was it what? It slaps. Yeah. Oh, okay. Slaps. <laughs> okay. Has this become explaining yeah. words? Yeah. yeah. Good goodness. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, don't we okay. have a six scale figure to unbox? Yeah, I think so. There, and then, yeah. I'll tell you, this figure slaps. Um, <laughs> I, okay. I, am I I'm using done. that Pull right? Off screen. Uh, while he's wrapping, actually, while he's, yes. While he's wrapping that up, I should uh, let everybody know that that sideshow show is happening this Friday at uh, sideshow.com backslash geek group. Um, so that's a that's a thing that's happening. I um, Paul, did you want to say a thing or two about that, or is that pretty much sum it up? Yeah, no, no, that, that's it. Side.show forward slash geek group. Join the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group. We'll be in there every Friday. Every Friday we can. Uh, we're going to do our best to wrap up the spooktacular event. And we've got some other fun shenanigans planned for everyone. You know how that show goes. It's, it's always a, uh, it's a nightmare incredibly... that you really wish you could wake up from, but you just can't seem to. So that's, su that's how I'm pitching that show. Okay. I was surprised just how scripted that show is. Just uh, yeah, we've got great the, writers. Here. Yeah, the amount of, oh, cool. or, or, I think it's the same writers from The Office. Um, <laughs> yeah, are doing are doing that, including Ricky Gervais. And I by The so. Office, you mean like an office behind a Rite Aid where they just throw scripts away? Then yes, that show. Yeah, well, that's that's the one I meant. Pulled from, the... pulled from the dumpster behind the Rite Aid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ripped into a million pieces, randomly pieced back together, and just read aloud. <laughs> oh yes, uh, Friday we right, will be a, that's, um, that's we will totally be doing we'll be that. doing that one. That's what will be happening. Side.show forward slash geek group. Uh, join the group. Okay. We've got about 49,000 people in there now. We're, we're approaching 50,000 members in that group. We've got exclusive wow. giveaways, uh, sometimes like for shows like How to Be a Poser, sometimes for Strike a Pose. Uh, we drop information in there first before it gets out to the masses. Like I know 
Terry, when we had people audition for Strike a Pose, like our fan editions, which we do have coming up, uh, we actually got auditioned there first. So we went really? there before we went public. And I think that's, um, you know, and again, we're always looking for our contestants for Strike a Pose. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to point out that um, also, the, speaking of Strike a Pose, uh, there is a new episode that's now live on the side.show backslash YouTube. Um, it's really, really a good one. It's I had a lot of fun with this group. Um, it also features the highest highest recorded score by a contestant on an episode of Strike Opposed to date. Uh, so tune in to watch that. It uh, features the Leatherface six scale figure. I don't think I'm spoiling anything there. I think it's actually on the uh, on the preview, so it's not giving anything away. And three contestants who are basically horror aficionados or professionals within the horror industry in one way, way shape, or form, some one way or another. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, how are we looking there, guy? Did you get that? Uh, yeah, uh, did you get yeah, that shield yeah. we are, we yeah. are on there. Um, not at all surprised that it took a while to do that. It's, I've, I've met, yeah, it's, it's a very finely detailed little, yeah, little task um, that has to be performed. Uh, we're going to have him do a bit of a close up there on the, on the upper part. Now, as we talk about, you know, that fresh out of the box, uh, that's that, that, uh, that strap that's going to go up around the top of the or, or the forearm there is going to be snug. Okay, it's not stretched, it's not loose in any way. So actually, what I did first, um, I found myself taking off the wrist cuff because once you remove the hand, that can slide off, and then kind of gently moved that in, kind of opening that up, uh, the okay. the strap there, and then I was able to clip it in a little bit. Uh, That's really awesome. I'm I'm sorry that we missed that. I'm sorry that we uh, that we distracted from that because that would have been something really cool to see. I mean, I think we gave some pretty cool information to our viewers out there. But who knows? Maybe we'll get to watch that happen in an episode of How to Be a Poser. How to Be a Poser. If you want to see the lowest score ever, uh, that would be the one I was on. I forgot to take the figure out of the box. <laughs> I think I got a two, and that was for showing up. Um, you should watch Guy's performance. It's actually really solid on that show. <laughs> I just remember yeah. we were a good I mean, five minutes win, in, and obviously. you said, "Are you going to start posing it?" Because I was looking at everything. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that bit. That, but, that's one hundred percent true. Yeah, totally but speaking of posing, what shall yeah, we do, sir? This. I've got uh, shield in our left hand here now. Well, portrait, yeah, I, I unmasked portrait. I have props. Oh, great. I think unmasked portrait is where it's at, so okay. let's just leave that where it is because I don't have a helmet. I can't, I can't make that happen. But what I do have is a great head of hair. Darn it, that's what he has. Shield. There you go. So we got that. Yeah. And of course, like we said, we're going to do it in his left arm, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that for this first pose, we're going to do something sort of. Um, we're going to do kind of like a museum pose. Okay. A, a hero pose. But we're going to do it featuring as we want to do this kind of thing featuring as many accessories as we can, obviously. Okay. So to that end, I think in his right hand, ah, we're going to put the case. All righty. Right. Who right, thought so, you would have had a guitar case around, huh? Right. Who knew? Yeah, Who'd have known? I kind of like that I'm doing this because this is really the, the faux leather on the back of my shield really needed some weathering, so I'm going to. Get really rough this up as much as I can today. So here's what I think we should do. We've done this before, talking about you know very military esque uh, sort of uh, sort of poses. Mm -hmm. So let's just have it kind of like standing. Imagine the, the imagine the figure is like 45 degrees to the camera, right? Okay. Feet about shoulder width apart, but then you're going to shift the weight to the back foot. And when I, I think I said 45 degrees, right? I meant to say shoulder width apart. Um, shift the weight to the back foot using the hips. And then torso twist slightly to the front. And then have his shield up like this. So we're going to cock that, el that left elbow back, that left arm back, and then bend it at the elbow. And have it held up here like kind of at the ready. And then just have that shield, or have the shield, have that case just kind of just kind of hanging back here like he's protecting it. Okay, and now we'll get into head as you move along. Okay? Now, um, talk to me about: um, Am I going to turn the leg out at all? Uh, I'm stepping back, like you would be able to see me there, but 
feet, I think the feet will be about a slightly less than 45 degrees to each other. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, just imagine, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn and face you right now. But feet shoulder width apart, then shift that weight. Are you seeing me do it? Okay. Shift, shift that it. Weight back and then turn the torso this way. Got it. Got it. Okay. okay. This is a great. This is a great shield. <laughs> what I like about this is, um, you know, Captain America. If you're talking to anybody that looks great in a, you know, museum yeah. standard hero looking pose, it's it's him. I completely agree. I um. Yeah. I'm trying to find the jack of my headphones. There we go. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I think I think that I've, I've pretty much always posed Captain America in museum poses in my collection when I've had when I've had the figures. Oh, that I, really I want to say that I I want to say that I only have one right now and it's currently boxed up in the basement. But I t I can't recall a time that I ever had an action pose going on on a displayed Captain America figure. Uh, he just he's just such an icon that you legitimately. I, I almost feel that it's just essential that you do a museum pose with him. Or he, or in this particular case, in his particular case, you would probably refer to it as a hero pose. Mm -hmm. Specifically. There are multiple... All all hero poses are museum poses, but uh, not all museum poses are hero poses. Hmm. There, there's Very a well quote. said. There's a quote for you. <laughs> not a hashtag, the list you are. Oh. All right, um... I want to talk about what we're doing down here on the leg because that was actually an area um, I wasn't seeing what we were doing. Um, okay, turn am the, I turn turning the, figure, the legs the hip, out? Turn the figure so that the hips are facing me, so that I can get a better look at it. So that both the hips are just straight onto the camera. Okay, now it looks like that back foot. The, looks like the foot is turned a little bit towards his left. I would put that back so that it's in more of a natural position. Um, you just I'll leave it up to your discretion, but you sh you, you probably know what uh, what the feet will look like mm -hmm. when, the, uh, when they're in a natural position. Right now, it just looks like it's a little the toes are pointed in and they probably shouldn't be correct. Uh, um, the, straight leg to be like this is oh, a yeah, straight yeah, leg. This is a stand at attention tile. Uh, back back leg will be straight. I'm going to back up again just to try to give you a yeah more of a yeah. But uh, let me turn that up. Now, because of the way that the hips work, okay, when you do this, it's, it's kind of weird because be, but your, your hips will shift so that your right hip kind of goes up and your left hip goes down when you shift over this way. The end result is that your back foot, your back leg, will be straight, but the left leg will be slightly bent, a little bit cocked, because that slack down here on the left foot is taken up by that shift in the hips because the left hip goes down and the right hip goes up. It enables that right leg to be straight and the left leg to be ever so slightly bent. Once you get that done, you just turn the hip, you just turn the torso a little bit to the left, making sure that you're not bent over sticking your butt out. You want to get that, you want to get that, this whole area here just stuck forward, uh, thrust forward a little bit so that it just looks proud and not slouched, not like he has a lower back issue. So hopefully, uh, yeah, I think uh, if and if you have any questions about that, go ahead and ask, guy. But I think that uh, I think that should probably sum it up. Ooh, that's looking good. And I'm trying to determine. Now I did put him I on the stand was... only because when you have the um, the case, obviously you're going to have a little bit more weight. And when I was throwing that backward um, without uh, going this wide is, this stance. Is my take. This, it might take a little bit, for everybody. Yeah, uh, to I'm do it. Put that out there, this out here for everybody out there who's watching the show, uh, and just and just settle this right now. Um, my whole take on the use of stands is that um, there's really no point to be proven by displaying your figure without a stand. Uh, it's um, it's a cool thing to do for a photography and whatnot. Obviously, if you're trying to take your figure and give it the appearance that it's actually in another world, then that's a, that's that's fine. Then do that. But when it comes to long term display. The people at at at, uh, at Hot Toys and other companies, they they really go all in to give you a nice looking stand like this. Then it becomes part of the display, and I think you have a, you have a double duty: one, to actually showcase that figure as best you can. If that stand contributes to it, then by all means use it. But and but additionally, you want to protect your figure, and 
definitely have it on the stand to make sure that it doesn't fall over and things don't break. Nice. There's no there's no shame in using a stand. I'd use mine almost always. The only figure that doesn't use a stand right now is the Neon Tech Iron Man 2.0, and that's because he's in a kneeling pose. Just there you go. Badass. Now, also on this one, and, and another reason you, you might want to use the stand is, remember, we now have that new ankle articulation and a different little yes. style, so we're able to kind of yeah. put that yeah. out there. Right. Now, one other thing that I think we should do just to make it look more heroic is to just take his head, turn it ever so slightly, like two or three degrees to the left, and have him look up like he's gazing into the distance. Don't All right, we're like going to go. Somebody, like he's looking out for danger. All part and parcel of the hero pose. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it back to you, and we're going to go left mm -hmm. and up. A little higher. A little bit, and a little bit more over the shield. Turn his head so he's looking more over the shield. Or bring the shield in so that it's actually closer to his line of sight, one or the other. Your tick, your pick, dealer's choice guy. Okay. No pr turn no the bicep. Boom. Yeah. All right, let's rotate that. Have a look at the camera. Ah, uh, yeah, that's America's ass right there. <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to say that. I told myself I was not going to say that. I did. I'm so disappointed in me right now. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not. It's, it's a fantastic line. <laughs> when we got to do Deadpool Day, I said that was Canada's. So, yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great pose, guy. Yeah, that looks good. Job well done. All right. Ooh, when cool. we talk about yeah. that. <laughs> Who posed him like that? <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, Alan written all over it. Uh, this would be Alan. That's um, a total. Your there are Alan some very it. unique uh, poses that Alan uh, does when we're all away from the studio. Um, we're discussing them. We're discussing them. So we'll leave it at that. Um, Is there an intervention in process? <laughs> since no? he's okay. right here, we don't want to preemptively let him know that it's going to happen. But. Okay, all right, got Probably it. Gonna you know he decides uh, if you're going to be on the show or not, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure we're all... Exactly. I, but I like that energy, guy. It's the same as just like, you're such a interesting person. I love that you can just wear anything. You know, it's like, <laughs> interesting posing ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really, really good. What, yeah, we, what, we, what we say here is bold choices. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Bold choices. Bold choices. Um, That's but, a hashtag right there. Uh, <laughs> bold choices. But um, it's a great way to see kind of um, the way in which the head sculpt uh, has changed, has become, you know, obviously, you know, this is jumping back to 2012 and what he was going to look mm -hmm. like then. This is the very end of Endgame. So there is a variation. And then, of course, this is him. Uh, with the beard, for those of you who mm. may have watched uh, the cobbled cosplay, this was this was my demise right there. Which he totally copied off of Thor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, everybody going for the beard, um, yeah. which is spectacular. Um, but a great, great figure. Um, shall I bring up the last one? Um, yes, I think so. We have jumped into the archive here. For those of you that may have... The original 2012. Hashtag Spider-Man. Version. Ah. Yeah. All right. And you'll see the next one. I mean, if you have this one, you need to get this one here. Number one, you're going to get this incredibly cool case, uh, mm -hmm. which is spectacular. Um, and uh, you get to do the fight oneself. And uh, you can lay a figure down and just have America's ass. You can have yep. that. You know, who doesn't want to have uh, that? But as you can see, there are some some changes. I had a feeling people might want to uh, to know about it. It's, this is one of those times where it's uh, it truly is a new f a, a new figure, uh, but so great to have. Uh, I did. I think it's fantastic. Cool. It's definitely one to get. Definitely one to pick up. Well, speak, speaking of speaking of getting things, I think uh, we have a winner for we the, do have a winner. Guest, uh, guest, Terry's, guest Terry's next figure contest, the first ever and probably last ever guest Terry's next figure <laughs> contest. You just have to keep uh, buying figures, is what it is. <laughs> tink, tink, tink. <laughs> Well, um, you said it live. That was your fault. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yes, each week, you will be buying a new we, figure. Um, we do have a winner. Congratulations over on Facebook to Mr. Anthony Barrera. 
congratulations you win this die hard christmas book um this is awesome i mean it's by inside editions seriously it's such a fun book you can go on our youtube as well and i believe you can see steve bloom reading it mm -hmm. <laughs> so much fun it's so much fun. Uh, please email social at sideshow.com. Let us know what you won, which is that Die Hard book, where you won it, unsealed and revealed. You can even include the date if you want. Address, phone number. We'll get it out to you ASAP. Uh, give us four to six weeks or so. But we will get back to you. Congrats, Anthony. It's points if you start that email with UBKA. So That's I'm true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Points how you sign else. it may be very different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terry points. Not reward points, just Terry points. Yeah. <laughs> Totally different. I need to okay, redeem well, mine. That's, that's it for the show. That's it for today's show, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and watching us unbox the 2012 version of the Captain America six scale figure by Hot Toys. Uh, great figure. Really glad we got to have fun with that today. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, guy. You really nailed it with the pose. Thank Paul, you, sir. Thanks for all your thanks for all your help behind the scenes and and, and on and on camera. Uh, speaking of behind the scenes, all of our produ production team, producer Michael, super producer Sam, and producer Alan, you guys, as always, were on point. Uh, and everybody at home, again, thanks for tuning in. We couldn't do this without you. You're the reason why we do it. So until next time, don't forget to let your geek side show. Bye, everyone. Yeah.